guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Um, I'm so excited to be doing this video and to be participating in the uh, Nonfiction November Challenge, which was created by a book Olive, so I'll link her, I'll link her channel uh, down in the description box so you can check her out as well. And thank you so much to Michelle um, for making me aware of this challenge. I'll link her channel down below as well. So if you want to participate, all you got to do is read at least one nonfiction book. Uh, if you want to go all out like me, um, you can also follow the uh, four one word prompts. Uh, so, for example, and they're very much open to interpretation, which is great because um, that's definitely what I did. I interpreted <laughs> um, the way it kind of kind of the way it suited me. So, I mean, there's no harm in doing that either. So, for example, one of the prompts is style. So you can choose a book uh, by the author whose style you really like, or you like the style of the cover, um, or the book talks about style. But I also, I want to sit somewhere where you can see my, my cute little fox and the pumpkin as well. So let me move a little bit to the left or whatever it is. Is it left or right to you? Um, let's get started. Uh, the first prompt is collection. And I chose, well, I interpreted the word collection in the most obvious way. I'll be reading a collection of essays written by George Orwell. And I'm so excited because I can't stop saying excited in this video, but I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I read Animal Farm in 1984, and 1984 is one of my favorite books, so because I, I also love um, George Orwell's writing style, and this collection in particular, let me read the, the back for you. Uh, beginning with a dilemma about whether he spends more money on reading or smoking, George Orwell's uh, entertaining and uncompromising essays go on to explore everything from the perils of secondhand bookshops to the dubious profession of being a critic, from freedom of the press to what patriotism really means. So yes, really excited for this one. Next prompt is industry, and I chose The Language Instinct by Steven Pinker, uh, which is a great book for anyone working in the language industry. Um, like me, I am a, a coordinator in a language school. So how do babies learn to speak? Why are there so many languages? Do we think in our mother tongue? Who decides what's correct English? How did language evolve? In this landmark book, landmark book, Pinker explains the mysteries of language with a coherent theory. The language is an adaptation for communication. So, um, yes, I already feel like I will love this book, not just because I love languages, and, but because I've heard a lot of good things about Steven Pinker, and um, I know that I will keep um, referring back to this book after I've read it. I mean, no pressure, but I, I, I just know it. The next prompt is style, and I chose Troublesome Words by Bill Bryson, another book about language. So I guess I'm kind of cheating, but I still found a way to make it work for the, the prompt. So I guess I'm good. Um, so, it, yeah, it is written in a very unique style. So it, it's like a regular book, but also a dictionary. And I love dictionaries. I'm probably the only person that can sit down and just read a, a dictionary. <laughs> appreciate has a slightly more specific meaning than write, writers sometimes give it. If you appreciate something, you value it or you understand it sympathetically. But when there is no sense of sympathy or value, understand or recognize or the like would be better words. Good to know. Another 
book that I have for this prompt style, um, and that is The Meaning of Mariah Carey, which is Mariah Carey's memoir, and she is one of my favorite singers of all time. I just love her. I started collecting her. I own a lot of her albums. I mean, who collects albums anymore? I guess it's the same as asking who reads physical books anymore, right? But yeah, I love Mariah Carey. The only issue with this book is that I don't have a physical copy of it, but so I ordered it and it's supposed to arrive in like two weeks which will be just in time for November, right? Or a little bit, well, or a little bit later. But yeah, I, I really do hope that it gets here for nonfiction November because I would really love to read that book as soon as possible. And the last prompt is Treatment. And for that one, I chose a book in French. I'm so surprised that I did because I don't like, I mean, I don't like reading in French. I do. I uh, don't like reading in French. Okay. <laughs> I don't like reading in French because I just always have such a difficult time. Um, like I said many times before, I speak French every day, but reading is a completely different task. Mm, it's already um, a challenge, right? Nonfiction November. But I'm giving myself um, an extra challenge to read um, in French, this month, it says, Vivre en famille en Moyen Âge. Uh, it means living in family in the Middle Ages. Um, so last year, I went to a castle next to Paris, which is called um, Chateau de Vincennes, and I really loved it. I fell in love with all things Middle Ages, castles, um, kings and queens, all that sort of stuff, and that's where I bought this book about the Middle Ages, so I'm really looking forward to exploring more about how people lived and um, how they were treated. That's why I chose this book for the prompt treatment, because I want to see how they treated each other and how they were treated. There are also a lot of images in this book, so I think it will be a lot of fun to read it as well. So, yes, really, ooh, that was pretty. That is it for my books for this November challenge. If you want to participate, let me know in the comments, or if you're already participating, um, let me know, and I'll go and watch your video. Bye.